Hello, welcome to the eighth quest in the third mansion of St. Teresa's interior castle model of the soul. What God needs, Teresa says, is our being. He needs the clear intent of our will. That is what today's quest is about. God's will, surrender my will to God or not. That is the question. As usual, we'll use Lexio Divina, where we'll have a reading and reflections on the reading, meditatio, and then we'll pray the conversational prayer and we'll also contemplate in silence. Teresa says the entry door to this castle and the way to move from quest to quest is through prayer and meditation. We're doing this to discover who you really are, your true self, below the surface. You will need a journal, and it couldn't just be a spiral notebook. So stop the video and go get one if you don't have it now. So there's seven mansions inside the castle. We are at the third. So they proceed in order. So if you haven't already watched the videos that go with the first mansion, the description box, box tells you where to go for the playlist. Similarly, after you finish those for the second mansion, there is a playlist for those given in the description box. And then finally, if you don't know how to contemplate and need much more practice and instruction, there is also, there are two playlists for learning how to contemplate. In the third mansion, we are working on surrender of will and practicing the virtues. So, looking at what we've done, let's go over here. And it shows what we've done so far. Okay. We worked on motivation regular, routine, and then during difficult, complex, or uncertain times, free will, how to make significant choices well, responsible choices, God's will examples, so we could learn what, it, what God's will is going to be like before we decide. God's will for me, we learned how to figure out God's will for me, but we'll keep working on it. Then we, how do I motivate myself to follow something I perceive as God's will? All right, then we talked about what does it mean to surrender my will to God? That was yesterday. And today, in humility, before God, the quest is, will I surrender my will to him or not? So all the quests have led us up to this moment to this quest. The Holy Spirit is active in all of our questing as well. So today, surrender my will or not, that is the question. So our reading is back again to Oswald Chambers in his book, My Utmost for His Highest. That means giving my most for, his, for God's glory. All right, so I have some verses from his and the date show, it's a, it has 365 days in it, so it's, it's like a devotional for each day. So I just picked and chose among them. Total surrender to the love of Christ is the only thing that will bear fruit in your life. Perfect love casts out fear once we are surrendered to God. Once we are totally surrendered to God, he will work through us all the time. If we are totally surrendered to him, we have no goals of our own to serve. Oh, we have no goals of our own. Why is that? You are not your own. You are his. It says in 1 Corinthians. And finally, if you are faced, like you are today, 
with a question of whether or not to surrender. Go through this crisis, he says. Make a determination to go through this crisis today, making a decision. Surrendering all that you have and all that you are to him. And God will then equip you to do all that he requires of you. So there's no worries about you not being prepared when you're in a crisis. He will take you weakness and all and give you what you need. So, what is Chambers saying here? Take 30 minutes just to read through and think about what it is, 30 seconds, excuse me, to think through this all. Go. Think about what he's saying and write something down. Well, what is Chambers saying? Well, I wrote, see how yours compares. I wrote, God's perfect love pours out of us to other people when we're surrendered to God. We belong to God. He uses us in all our moments, open to him, rather than pursue our own goals. Open to him rather than pursue our goals. When we're surrendered to God, God's perfect love pours out of us to other people. We belong to God. He uses us in all our moments. This is so beautiful, isn't it? Now, why would you want to live this way? Remember we talked about it yesterday? It's crucial to ask yourself again today. Why would you want to live like this? Why would I want to live this way, Lord? Go. I wrote, and I talked to the Spirit about this yesterday, every day is interesting because you don't know how God would use you, right? So that's pretty exciting. That's one reason. No matter what your feelings or your personal weaknesses, God uses you as a vehicle for his purpose. That gives our life a great deal of purpose to know that God is using us. No matter our weaknesses, no matter how we feel today, I might feel blah. So some days at school, you know how when you're, you, your job, you just go every day, doesn't really matter how you feel unless you're really sick. Well, that's kind of the way it is. God uses you as the vehicle for his purpose, no matter how you feel or what your personal weakness is. The other thing is that the presence of Christians in the world is, God, it is God's way to respond to all people. That's how important you are. You are a hero on a mission. Christians, remember, are the salt of the earth, the light on the hill, the conduits that connects from God, the source, to everyone in the world that passes through you. Christians are the salt, the light, the conduit of God's graces. And this is how God's recognition, love, and guidance go out to all the people in the world 
it's through Christians. One way is through the Christians. We are the salt. We are the light. We are the pipe through which God's grace is passed. So I think the question is, who wouldn't want to live in this way? Who wouldn't? It, it takes responsibility, doesn't it? But it also gives you everything you need. So that's different. All right? That's different. All right. So here it is. Will I surrender my will to God's will? So let your mind talk to you first. Will I surrender? And you talk it over with your mind. Go. Write something down. I've surrendered my will to God before, but I wrote this as if I was doing it again today so I could be with you. Here's what my mind replies. Yes, I will. I'm willing to be God's agent, even if that makes me different from other people who haven't surrendered their will. I will do my best, but even better is that you will be pouring your love and graces through me. So see, I don't have to be that great. God's pouring his best through me. And his, his always looks better than even my strengths. Remember Paul saying that in one of his letters. I'm willing to be God's agent, even if that makes me different from other people. And it will. That may be one of the hardest aspects, even if that makes me different from other people who haven't surrendered. Are you ready for that? Now let's ask the Spirit, Lord, will I surrender my will to God's will today? Explain to me, what will I do you who know me better than I know myself. Pray to the Spirit. Go. What is the Spirit saying to you? Write it down. Stop the video whenever I don't give you enough time.
The spirit replied, I always want you and your will to be part of my plan. Yes, I know you surrender your will to mine. I guide your path day in and day out. You want to be part of the solution to the world's problems. And, and I do. I certainly don't want to be part of the problem either. People won't conquer them by human intellect, but through my plan carried out by Christians who have submitted their wills to mine. All right, we have brains. We have wills. In our brain, we have wills, emotions, and we gain knowledge, we learn. We use all of those things, but the person guiding us is the Lord to whom we have submitted our will. All right. I think the key aspect is that you will appear different. time. God transforms you. So God has been transforming you throughout the mansions, but after you surrender, it accelerates. your focus is on God. God's goals, not your own. All right? Just like Oswald Chambers was saying. So I want you to think about the fact of that you will have to put up with peering different. That people will notice there's something different about you. You're getting saltier, you Christian. There's something different about you. You may appear more serene, but in fact, it's because you're becoming more loving to other people. All right, you're noticing now when people are hurt. You're noticing now when situations arise and you're led to do something. Your life changes gradually. But once you submit, this transformation accelerates. All right, we're already in the third mansion. You can expect then mansions four, mansion four, to be much more mature, to rely on much more mature requests than the first three. All right. Your transformation will accelerate because you're becoming ever more mature once you surrender your will to God. All right? Now, some further reflections. So, this is the crisis point in the spiritual quest. Now, in the third mansion, we must make our choice to surrender our will to God's will and do so totally. No half in and half out, both feet together, of one mind, heart, and soul, submit yourself to God and his will for everything. Make your choice. Right now, make your choice. Not half in or half out. Both be together of one mind, one heart, one soul. Submit yourself to God and his will for everything. All right, let's say you choose yes. If we choose, if you chose yes, you move harmoniously farther into the castle. 
More importantly, we become wider conduits pouring God's love to all people. God situates us, puts us where we're needed. No task is so small as to be insignificant. We're led in many more small tasks than we are large ones. From now on, we you are a vessel of the Lord. All right, so if you answered yes, I submit myself to God. This is what happens. You move harmoniously further into the castle, but more importantly, you become a wider conduit pouring God's love to all people. God will put you where you're needed. And remember, no task is too small that it's not significant. From now on, the Lord will direct you. You'll be a wonderful vessel of the Lord. Does that mean you'll be perfect? Oh, no. But your conduit is wider, much wider now. Now, what if, what if you can't really say yes yet? What if you're half in and half out? All right, so let's look at what we do then. If anyone is not ready to surrender yet, no worries. Here's what you need to do. Work through the first and second mansions, those videos, at a deeper level. This time, through, rely on yourself. Last time, you may have relied a little too much on me because it was all so new. That's fine. But you're ready now, after the internship, to go deeper than you did last time. You ponder the questions in Scripture. You write everything down. Don't write anything I write. Write your reflection. Ponder the questions and the Scripture. And relax and go deeper into contemplation. Where do you get all these things to start over? The description box below gives you the playlist for all the St. Teresa mansions and all of the series of extended contemplation videos I made first. I made one on love, one on faith, and one on the Holy Spirit. So if you want to expand your contemplation and just need more practice, go to those playlists that are listed at the bottom of the description box. All right. Let's go into contemplation. Now that you've made the decision to surrender yourself or not yet, sit in silence for up to 20 minutes. Use your sacred word whenever you find yourself thinking and go back to God. Remember, it, it happens. It's normal for a to happen many, many times. All right. So,
Welcome back from contemplation. So today was a turning point, a crisis. We decided whether we were willing to surrender our will to God or not. So, after today, those who continue and finish the third mansion will be those who have surrendered their will. Those who did not yet will just go back to the first and second man mansions and work your way through again. And in addition, in contemplation, there are videos listed that will help you if you're having trouble with contemplation at this point. All right? You can decide whether you want uh, Lexio Divinus and extended contemplation about love or verses about faith or verses about the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, help us to see that when we surrender to you, the best is yet to come. Thank you for caring so deeply about your children. We want, we know you want us to have a fruitful, purposeful life. A life of meaning, security, warm relationships, and adventure. Forgive us when we don't follow your will, even though we perceive it, because we're afraid or uncertain. Work through us to give us courage, trust in you, strength, and the motivation to act. Thank you for your continuous generosity, giving us all we need. Guide our daily practice of following your will every moment as we think about our surrender to you and your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll continue on, and I'll talk to you later. Go with God. Bye.